you guys welcome back to my channel this is going to be lesson three of the teach yourself fashion academy series here on my channel and in this lesson i'm going to be covering the important things that you will need to know um to pretty much start building your curriculum to start the journey of teaching yourself fashion so the key to pretty much starting this journey of course is understanding that your creativity is important in, le in the leading of your learning and pretty much trying to discover your aesthetic, which I discussed this in lesson one and trying to pretty much flourish in your learning path and teaching yourself fashion, but holding on to who you truly are, which will pretty much allow your aesthetic to naturally unfold. But also the other part of that, as far as that's the creative aesthetic building and pretty much making building your footprint and building in that pretty much growing and learning the fashion design process and learning within fashion as far as how you fit and you will naturally be able to thrive once you reach to that level of education and your learning but the other key and the other side to that of course is having knowledge of the industry and the process and everything that um pretty much everything that you need to know in order to actually make your actual vision and your aesthetic and your creativity come to life in the world and present those things to the world so you have your vision your aesthetic and your creativity but you want to be able to translate that into the actual industry and in order to do that you have to know the basic foundations and the most important things when it comes to navigating the industry and that's where your curriculum building begins so building your curriculum, it starts with the most important things you need to know as far as how to navigate your journey and how to begin navigating your journey. Don't try to vacuum learn everything. Don't try to just consume a, like a lot of information all at once. Focus on the most important factors of the industry and then let your creativity lead your learning and do the rest. And I, like I said, I've talked, touched on letting your creativity lead your learning in lesson one. So if you haven't watched that lesson, make sure you go check out lesson one and also lesson two, because I also touched on a few things in lesson two, as far as the roles within the industry and all that kind of stuff. So make sure you check out that video as well. But like I said, in this video, we're going to be talking about building your curriculum. So where do you begin in building? your curriculum um, I broke it down into four different categories which is the industry the process the presentation and the operations now with the industry when it comes to building your curriculum around um, understanding the industry is understanding the different roles within the industry and how to navigate that as far as like the parts or the roles the the responsibilities within the roles of the industry and I touched on those roles in lesson two so if you want to go check out lesson two I touched on those roles but we're gonna talk more about that also in this video so that's um one category as understanding the different roles within the fashion design process and then the responsibilities within those roles because and the importance in that is so you will be able to navigate them in the beginning because when you're teaching yourself fashion and you might not have as many resources to actually um, go out there and do a lot of things you have to learn certain learn these roles for yourself so you don't want to not having enough resources to stop you from actually starting the journey of teaching yourself fashion because there is a way that you can navigate these different roles and not really have a lot of money to do it. And a part of that navigation could be outsourcing help through um, different businesses or um, like Fiverr and stuff like that. You have different businesses that actually allow people who are freelancers to help you in certain roles so it's that's important to understand the roles because then you'll be able to communicate what you need for that person that you may hire and also teaching yourself how to maybe execute some of those roles and i did that like i i educated myself in how to execute each role and try to understand the foundations of each role and Maybe you're not someone who um, want to do that or you you just really want to design, 
But there, like I said, there's ways that you can actually go and do the research to try to find freelancers within that role to help you navigate or help you execute within that role. But that's why it's still important for you to understand each role and the ro- the responsibilities within each role. And then you have the process and the process pretty much includes the vision and the execution. And that starts with the vision of as the designer and the role of the designer all the way through the execution of creating that vision or bringing that vision to life and creating that final product so that you will have to understand the process, the fashion design process and each step within that fashion design process and the importance of each step within that fashion design process, as well as, like I said, the roles within that process in order to create the final product. Then you have the presentation and the presentation includes the branding and the promotion, which is your brand, like your identity, as far as like, um, how you want to present yourself and how you want to, how you want the world to see you as a brand and the products that you're presenting to the world. And the presentation is important because the presentation is pretty much how is it, how is it being visually presented for people to receive, for your consumer base to receive, receive, how is it being visually being presented? And a uh, part of the branding and the promotion can be in the way of a fashion show, in a way of um, a social media campaign, in the way of photo shoots, in the way of um, online boutiques, um, in the way of marketplace selling. Like if you do different market, local marketplaces, in the way of like promoting it in small boutiques, if you want to put your products and try to get your products into small boutiques or whatever. And just, it's so many different ways that you can present your product to the world today. It's just so many ways you can do it. So you have so many options. You have, um, online marketplaces as well as physical marketplaces. Like there's so many ways that you can present your product. Like you don't, you no longer, are, you are no longer limited to trying to present your product in a way that back in the day where you probably had to go through certain fashion design, um, industry like within the actual industry and like trying to navigate connections with it within the actual industry now you have the ability to not be affiliated with the industry in a formal way but you can present your product and present your work in a way of freedom and like independence so the presentation is all about how you want to um, pretty much present your product it, it visually to the world. And then the operations is pretty much the reputation of your entire presentation and your business and everything. So it's the, it's the, rep, it's the reputation of your actual brand. And the operations is important is because, like, for instance, if you have an online boutique, you want to make sure that your operations is good within, like, the production and the shipping and the customer service and the returns and all. All of that kind of stuff. And like whether it's like if you're outsourcing and you're trying to get certain number of products sold in a small boutique or something, then you have to make sure that production is coming in and it's being consistent within the sales of that boutique. Same with if you're doing a a marketplace, a local marketplace, or you're doing like um, fairs and stuff like that. Like your operations and how you are, how you have things running um as far as the flow of the creation of your product and everything like that is important so as you can see fashion design is not only about the fun part of being creative and just making clothes and doing all like it's a lot that goes into teaching yourself fashion if you want to be someone who is not going the formal route of going to fashion school trying to get connections within the industry having a whole bunch of people that's working for you because you have the money to start it it's a lot of things that you have to learn in order to really navigate um, if you're trying to teach yourself fashion and do it in a way that is affordable, but yet you're still getting the job done, even if it's not in a formal way. All right. So yeah, that, that is the key to beginning your curriculum building is focusing on those four important categories and things that you need to know in order to navigate the journey of being successful or running a a profitable or just a nice flowing um fashion brand and that's the that's the reason why you want to teach yourself fashion right is so you can have um you can present your vision and your um your art to the world 
in the form of your presentation and you want to make sure that it's being successful in the flow of how you are operating it. All right, so this is a curriculum example that I wanted to share and you can write this down, take a picture, screenshot, but this is just a quick synopsis or a quick example of just the basics, the very basics of how you can start and where to start as far as teaching yourself fashion. And this curriculum is to inspire you and show you important information to know and how to begin your journey finding the information. If you know what to look for, it can make the learning journey an adventure of discovery. So you pretty much can just look at it. You see you have the history of fashion design where you just you're pretty much getting an understanding of the fashion industry and the history of it and how it operates in the fashion design process. Then you have your basic sewing techniques. This is where you're understanding the basic concepts of how you assemble garments through the different sewing techniques and the basic sewing techniques. Then you have the pattern making. So this um, is the section or the segment where you will be learning about pattern making, the un understanding the body and the different body types and learning to draft the basic just the basic pattern blocks and stuff like that and learning how to adjust those patterns to fit the body and um even understanding the commercial patterns that are sold in stores like the different symbols on them and all that stuff so you can know what you're doing with, even if you decide to use those type of patterns versus making your own and then you have the fabrics because it's definitely important to understand the different types of fabrics and fabric characteristics so you can know based off of your vision and design it what fabric will work with that design and what fabric will not work. And of course cutting and marking fabrics when it's time to assemble and sew your garment. Then you have the creative design um, segment where you're understanding the importance of research during your creative design process, creating mood boards, um, collecting the inspiration, finding your aesthetic, um, even fashion illustration as far as learning just like the basics of um, fashion illustration and fashion terminology. So for instance, if you are not one who can draw, then maybe if you learn the fashion terminology, you can communicate, okay, I want a um, bishop sleeve with a peplum waist. Like you would be able to understand the fashion terminology when describing to your illustrator exactly what it is that you're looking for when it comes to your vision of the design. And you have the garment glossary. So that's pretty much like, understanding the different types of garments and stuff like that all right and then you have the design details and design details is pretty much understanding like pretty much similar to um understanding the fashion terminology and your garment glossary, garment glossary. the design t details is pretty much like the things that really kind of give your design as designs a special je ne sais quoi like it just brings that uniqueness and understanding like sewing appliques and sewing on beads and um maybe the zippers in a certain place or buttons or just like does like little small design details that will take a basic design and add more to it um marketing promotion Marketing and promotion, of course, it doesn't have anything to do with the actual creating of the garment, but it has everything to do with the promotion and presentation of the garment, which is also an important factor and important for you to understand the information with that. So even if you have a team or you have people who you um, have hired and brought on to be the marketing and promotion, you will still be able to communicate with them exactly what it is that you want and what you're looking for, understanding um, how to put together a fashion portfolio, branding and marketing, social media, ways to sell your fashions. This is being realistic. This is, of course, um, a Teach Yourself Fashion Academy. So for me, I understand that a lot of people are not necessarily going through the fashion school process to where um, maybe they're not trying to necessarily 
um, dive into the actual industry to where maybe they just want to start their own collection. So yes, I w- believe that understanding ways, different ways that you can actually sell your garments and how to present them to get your brand out there is important. Outsourcing and manufacturing. So if you, um, don't necessarily want to be the one just making the clothes all the time and you want to outsource someone to develop the clothing for you. It's under, it's important to understand and know that information. So this right here was just a basic curriculum example of, um, yeah, of different things that you will definitely need to know. And it's a great way to start your journey. This is a great way to start your journey. But of course, when you let your creativity lead your journey, it's going to lead you, of course, to learning and wanting to know more. But yeah, this is a great way to start. All right, let's look at some starter kit basics. Like you, when you're teaching yourself fashion, you want to spend the least amount of money on your journey to learn fashion and begin to build upon your resources the more you discover your creative aesthetic. So this helps you save a lot of money and prevent you from wasting a lot of money. (laughs) Trust me, (laughs) trust me when I tell you, You don't want to be out here just trying to buy everything that you see all of the, like, just don't do it. Don't do it. All right. Just start with the basics. So, but, uh, majority of the time, the basics of course will include a sewing machine, uh, a sewing kit, iron cutting mat fabric. So I'm going to, um, pretty much give you a couple of essentials to, you can write this down because I don't have everything on the PowerPoint or the slideshow here, but just write it down. But for me, I would suggest getting a sewing kit that actually has all of the beginner essentials in it included within the sewing kit. But um, yeah, here, here are some essentials, right? So we have your sewing machine and a sewing kit, which most sewing kits may have like, you know, you have the hand sewing kit that includes the needles, thread, thimble, measuring tape, needle threader, seam reaper, pins and marking tools or you can purchase those things separately but um you want your sewing kit to include those things then you have your iron and your ironing board your cutting mats which are very convenient but they're not necessarily a necessity initial fabric option can come from old clothes or thrift stores like if you're trying to practice and like Cause you're in the learning phase. So you're trying to teach yourself. So I would suggest not going to go to the fabric store and buy a bunch of expensive fabrics. If you go to the fabric store, try to buy some discounted fabrics. And of course, like I said, you can go to thrift stores or use old clothing and play around with those fabrics. All right. So these basic essentials will get beginners started on their sewing journey. And as their skills develop, they may want to add more advanced tools and supplies to their sewing kits or whatever. But as for a beginner, you don't really need too much. You don't want to spend too much. Um, So yeah, just get you a really nice affordable sewing machine. It doesn't even have to be extra fancy. Um, You can get definitely a beginner sewing machine so you can learn your sewing machine. You don't want to start off trying to get an expensive one and then you're trying to learn it and you end up breaking it because you don't know what you're doing. (laughs) So get a starter sewing machine and yeah just do um i believe that amazon will probably have some really good sewing kits that has all of the things that i mentioned like the needles thread scissors pins measuring tools and all that kind of stuff so make sure you probably check out amazon um to and i might put some links in the description bar below so just check the description bar and see if there's any links. I might send you some links of some different sewing, some different starter kits that I would probably suggest as well as sewing machines. So um, just check the description bar below. All right, so let's talk about some sewing practice tips. So practicing sewing uh, without the pressure of producing helps build your sewing muscle. So it's very important to just literally practice sewing, just sew without feeling like you have to be making something as far as for sale or whatever the case may be. But these are the, just the simple tips that I would suggest when it comes to um, practicing your sewing. I would suggest sewing practice worksheets, which 
sewing practice worksheets are great for even if you um are not a beginner sewer but you just kind of want to get you give yourself a warm-up before you get started on a project or whatever like i love doing the sewing practice practice worksheets um i'll put a link in the description in the uh, sorry i will put a link in the description bar below for you to um check out the sewing practice worksheets that i sell on my website and they're fun it's it's about 30 plus pages. It's a lot of pages. My daughter, she's wanting to learn to sew. So that's something, that's one of the things that I use for her to practice her sewing. All right. So my next tip will be design detail sewing. So this is simply like if you want to focus in on a specific detail, like a collar or a certain pocket or a certain, um, just a certain detail, just being detail specific to where you're not trying to create an entire garment, but you're just trying to sew, um, a dart or you're trying to sew a pocket. And it's just, you're focusing on mastering your skills when it comes to a design detail. That's a great muscle to build because yeah, like, <laughs> those details sometimes be the worst part of sewing projects. So I would suggest like literally practicing your sewing with just focusing on design details will definitely help you in the long run. And you also have small sewing projects. So focus on small sewing projects. Like if you want to do like some accent pillows, um, a pillowcase, just like some basic small sewing projects. To where you're not trying to create a, um, or a, you know, a Grammy gown or something, or, <laughs> or you know, a wedding dress while you're practicing. You know, just just practice creating small little sewing projects. And then um, something that I did, and I actually talked about this in one of my videos, is disassembling. I think I talked about it in my how I taught myself fashion. So, <laughs> but it's the disassembling and reassembling of old thrifted clothing. So I would go to the thrift store and see something uh, that I liked or whether it was just a specific design detail or if it was the entire garment. And what I would do is I would get my seam reaper and like literally pluck it apart and try to re-sew it. So that was a way that one, I not only learned how to, uh, I not only learned how to sew certain design details or and I practiced my sewing, but I understood um, and it helped me understand the concept of how the 2D patterns become this 3D garment. So yeah, doing that, I would have to say is like a big, big plus. And of course my final tip would be to just sew. Just sew, just sew. In order for you to build that muscle, you just have to sew. Don't be afraid and just sew. All right, so understand that you don't have to spend a lot of money to teach yourself fashion. Um, these are some different resource ideas of where you can go to literally find the resources that you need at a affordable cost, at an affordable cost, and not put so much pressure on yourself to feel like you have to have a certain amount of money in order to get started. So you can go to the library, get library books. And I have this in my DIY resource binders video where I show you how I created my own resource binders by um, literally scanning pages in library books. Like if I were rent out a library book and I wanted to record something or keep something for future references I will like literally just scan that page in the book and either laminate it or put it in a sheet protector and put it in my binder so going to check out books at the library YouTube is a great resource guide of course um thrift stores getting your fabrics and you know all that kind of stuff PDF patterns PDF patterns are um, to me, I will say that PDF patterns are easier than a lot of commercial patterns. Um, as far as like the basic, it's like the basic understanding of just how to assemble the pattern and like make the clothing that I feel like PDF patterns are a great way to start. Um, as far as like a beginner 
when it comes to understanding patterns. So, you know, um, you have, you can buy PDF patterns and, you know, they're actually affordable. Some people really definitely, um, mark their PDF pattern for great prices. My PDF patterns literally rain. It depends most of the time with my PDF patterns. If there's like a basic, um, pattern, I'm, literally go for like $1.99, $3.99. I try to keep mine very, very cheap. If I'm doing like a collection, the collection is a little bit higher because it has so many different um, variations of that pattern or whatever. But yeah, PDF pattern tend to be very, very um, simple. And the thing, great thing about PDF patterns as well is that you can print them as often as you want. So, <laughs> you know, with commercial patterns, you have to, Literally, like once you cut it, it's it's a wrap. You cut it, you know. So, yeah. But then you have your online sewing communities where I'm actually trying to produce one of those on my website. I have like a little creatives corner um, where I would love for a community to kind of be built there because I see that there are a lot of people who are trying to learn fashion and you know, they probably just need support. Of course, they're always asking me as far as like mentorship and stuff like that. So I wanted to create that as a way of me um, trying to help and mentor, but on a larger scale to where like if we build in a community, you know, if you have questions, like maybe someone can come in and help me, help me out and answer them if I'm not able to, or whatever the case may be, or you asking your question, I can answer it. And then maybe someone else who comes to the community, um, the community page can like see, oh, okay, that's a, okay. So it's like some people are not asking me the same thing over and over. Like if, if I'm doing one-on-one -on -one and you're asking me all the questions in a private setting and I'm giving you the answers in a private setting, then it's not really helpful to other people. So I wanted it to be more of like a community style type of a mentorship, I guess, um, to where I'm able to help everyone on a larger scale. So, and like I said, there's many communities online, so communities out there. It's a couple of communities on Facebook. You have like literally so many different communities. And then last but not least, online courses. Um, you have many different um, websites that have different online courses, whether it is learn you know the different things of fashion designs you can it's literally almost like you can literally buy the course and build your curriculum as if you are actually going to school and that's literally how they have it and I know with a lot of online courses because for me I love online courses I've taught myself a lot of things outside of fashion design and fashion design through online courses and the great thing about them is that I know with the platforms that I use like Udemy and um what is the other name i use udemy i'm a, i'll leave the links in the description bar below i use udemy and another one i use another one but um i'll make sure i leave it in the description i cannot think of the name of it right now i literally see the the picture of the logo in my mind but i somehow cannot think of the name but i'll leave it in the description bar below and yeah, so like I said, the online courses is like they literally have it to where you can build your own curriculum, even if it's through an online course. And they literally always have like 50% off sales and like buy two courses, get one free or like it's like there's so many different specials that come along with it to where it's definitely a much more affordable um, option than, of course, fashion school. <laughs> All right, so just like I touched on the previous um, slide where I gave you the resources, um, I do have your Teach Yourself Fashion DIY resource binders video. So make sure you go check out that video where I kind of give you an idea of how you can start building your own resource binders when you start this learning journey of teaching yourself fashion, when you start building, collecting, and collecting all the information that you're learning and everything you can literally create resource binders and keep those binders for ever because at the end of the day it's good to have resources to go back to it's like having a textbook but you don't have a textbook you kind of like built this yourself to where if you're doing uh working on a certain project and you need some memorization or you need some help 
um, remembering maybe how to do a certain thing or if you need inspiration or whatever the case may be, you have binders that you have created to help you go back to as a resource to help you. So make sure you go check out that video and I will leave it in the description bar below. So as you can see here, I did discuss um, teaching yourself. I have a teach yourself fashion playlist already on my YouTube channel. So make sure you go and check out that playlist where I've given some tips and stuff before and I will be adding on more to that playlist. But for my actual lessons like this one here, I'm going to be making it your Teach Yourself Fashion Academy play is I'm going to make that as a playlist. So you're going to have your Teach Yourself Fashion where I'm giving you different tips and just little small breakdowns and stuff like that. But as far as the specific lessons of the curriculum that I've kind of concocted and built together or put together, I'm going to have it in your Teach Yourself Fashion Academy. So yeah, make sure you guys go check out those. Yeah, I just don't have to deal. Yes, y'all eat. Yeah.